Welcome to Big Monday, presented by Joseph A. Bank. We're at the Don Oliver Acadome in Montgomery, Alabama, for this SWAC matchup, Alcorn State versus Alabama State. This is an important game in the Southwestern Athletic Conference because with Grambling and Alabama A&M not invited to the postseason tournament, everybody's going to get in. But you want to have that home court. And right now, both these schools at six wins are looking up at the standings, hoping they can find fourth place before the regular season comes to an end. Along with Malcolm Huckabee, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. Malcolm, we're going to have a couple of hot players in the conference going out tonight, beginning with whom the Braves bring in here in A.J. Mosby. He is playing some fantastic ball right now. One of the hottest players in the SWAC right now. In his last four games, he scored 20 or more points. Uh, he's going to be a key matchup tonight for Alabama State. I also like that he shoots 40% from the three-point line. Alabama State's Hornets are going to counter with a sophomore from right here in Montgomery, Reginald G. Uh, he is playing some good ball for Alabama State as well. He also gets to the free throw line where he's an 80% free throw shooter. We got some outstanding players in the SWAC on display tonight. We got a great environment here, one of the bigger buildings in the conference. I mean, how about a couple of keys here for these two teams? Well, I think turnovers and then transition defense for Alabama State. Uh, they want to get up and down. Alcorn State, Alcorn State, they want to get up and down and play at a fast pace. I think transition D is going to be huge in this game tonight. Alcorn State defeated Alabama State once this season, but now they're in the Acadome. We'll have the tip for you in a moment. Hello. Hi. How's it going? All right, how you doing? Welcome. So, this is the all-new Chevy Traverse. What do you think? This looks better than 99. Inside the Acadome, seats over 7,000. One of the bigger buildings you'll find in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. This is Big Monday. And we apologize for the temporary loss of signal. Tony Green is in charge of our game tonight. Hasiba Braggs, William Humes with him. And we're underway with Alabama State losing the tap to Alcorn. The Braves and the Hornets. Alabama State comes out in man-to-man. -man. And a difficult left-handed drive by Dante Sterling to put Alcorn State in front early. Pick and roll defense, that's going to be another key theme in this game tonight right there. you got a hedge on the ball screen right there and cut off that dribble drive. Yeah, a little bit of a look there at Reginald G. Here's Jacoby Ross, just a freshman out of New Orleans. Toby Iwusho with him right there. He's going to get the handoff. Alcorn comes out in a matchup zone. And lane opened up. For e. That's a nice floater by Iwisho. E. Over and back is the call. And we'll show you Lewis Jackson. 11 seasons at Alabama State. His life is Alabama State. He is a graduate here. His number is retired here. He was a tremendous player. He's in the conference's Hall of Fame. His wife is the women's coach. And drafted uh, by the Golden State Warriors in the third round. What round? The, the third round, back <laughs> when they had more than just two rounds. And I really enjoyed speaking with him. Played, had a nice run overseas. Uh, we were talking about our experiences over there. And uh, he played in Australia. Well, certainly a heck of a player back in his day. So a couple of turnovers after each team scored on their opening possession. That is A.J. Mosby, whom we talked about at the top. Nice crossover, finds an open man, and a nice aggressive drive by Yalen Reed. Well, that's twice now. Alcorn has had some nice uh, ball movement and then uh, dribble drives. That's not an easy finish taking the hit. Nice little soft touch off the glass. There's a post up and a little hook shot by Brandon Johnson, who had four blocks earlier this season. He's one of the best shot blockers in the conference. Back number two. I like this little post up duel going on here. That one missed by Brewer. And both teams staying home, deciding not to double. Air ball on the three. And good control that time by Sterling. Mosby into the front court and lost the handle. Looks like he and G might be a little individual matchup. The floater doesn't go. Rebound is fought for. It's a jump ball. 
And the possession arrow will go to the home team. And this right here, again, excellent ball movement. This is how you want to attack that zone. And a nice little low post move, turning over the left shoulder. And uh, we've seen early on in this game, both teams execute uh, on the offensive side. Bosho pass out to Fausto Pichardo. Pichardo on a tough right-hand drive. His pass stolen. And they're still fighting for it. Stolen back by Pichardo. The shot clock does not reset here, so it's down to nine. Oh, man, G. A little bit of contact, and G able to fight through it. That's just great upper body strength that time by G. Take the hit. A lot of contact, no call, but that's great concentration to finish that play off. Back inside here, Devin Brewer. Good solid defense. I don't know how he split that double team. The shot, however, by Mosby is errant. Pichardo creates his own and kisses it off the window. Pichardo's got a nice handle, and I think he's going to be a guy that can create some matchup problems in this game with his ability to put the ball on the ground, break down that defense, and get in the lane. Playing off the screen, tripped a little bit, and did he land out of bounds? He did. As that time, Maurice Howard just simply lost his balance and landed on the out-of-bounds line. He was trying to call a timeout, but did not get it done in time. Let's see how Alabama State looks like all kinds out of that matchup zone. Pichardo, that drive a little off, rebound tapped around, and it's the Hornets ball once again. Johnson, energetic player, and he also smashes Brandon it off the glass. Johnson. And a good start for Alabama State. He lost to Alcorn on January 22nd, 81 to 64. Well, Dave, I like that they're not settling for jumpers. They're trying to work the ball, get the ball in the paint, and get some high percentage shots. Mosby just a little bit off one more time, and here come Woshu and the Hornets. Woshu, hop step, knocked out of bounds, and will belong to the home team. When we come back, a good start for the Hornets and the Reginald G. Reginald G with the nice drive, take the hit and finish. Nice move by the sophomore. Carolina Syracuse at seven, Louisville Duke at ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. And in part by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. Here we are at Alabama State in Montgomery, not far from downtown. And this is Big Monday on ESPN and the SWAC. Malcolm Huckabee, Dave Lamont, and our ESPN crew. And a good start for the Hornets here. And there is a look at their huddle. Lewis Jackson, the head coach. He has a kitchen in his office. We spent some time with him before the game, and I look over, and he's got a stove and everything. I'm like, that might be the coolest coach's office I've ever seen. <laughs> and really enjoy it. You look at his resume, pretty impressive. Uh, back when they had the... More than two rounds drafted by the Golden State Warriors. A nice run overseas as well. And uh, you look at his coaching resume, five postseason appearances, uh, three NCAA tournaments, and NIT and the CIT. He's just done a, an outstanding job. Obviously, he was a great player here, uh, but doing an equally as well job as a coach at Alabama State. And no one will wear number 33 at this school because that is retired along with Kevin Loder's 44, Willie Scott's 32, and Charles Spears is number one. Still tries to play a little bit, but only a little bit as the body has told him it's time to just focus on coaching. We were sharing war stories, yes. and I was like, man, I only do it with my boys now. I can't go full court. I might be able to play half court with you. And he got a chuckle out of that. He said, man, I had to give it up when I turned 42. Couldn't get out there with the young boys anymore. Brewer gets the rebound on the shot by Ed Jones, number 14, a junior from Atlanta who has just checked in. That's Dante Sterling with it. All 
Corrin's missed four out of six shots in the early going. Each team has only taken one three, and, and they both missed. And that's a little bit of a surprise. We kind of expected to see more three-point shooting out of Alcorn. They lead the conference in three-point percentage. Well, nice job, though. Credit Alabama, Alabama State. Their pick-and-roll defense has also picked up. They're doing a nice job contesting shots. Mosby is 0 for 4, and he's not being selfish. He's had good looks. They're just not dropping. Yeah, that one he would like to have back. Nice split of a screen again, and that's just a layup that he missed. But, but again, credit Alabama State. They're doing a nice job trying to contest all shots. Pass in the corner. Five to shoot. A lot of passing. Somebody's got a fire here. Almost. Rebound. And we're going to get a whistle here. And one. Brandon Johnson has been a factor in the early going of this game. Well, he has been uh, the story of this game early on. His activity on the offensive glass right here on display. That's just grown man move right there. Go get an offensive board and put it back in. And uh, he has been active on the offensive glass. And when he's gotten opportunities down low in the paint, he has shown some nice touch around the basket. This is a part of his game that he will be working on in the offseason. He looks perfect there, however. His free throw shooting has been a bit off. But he is number four in the conference in rebounds. Number two in the conference in field goal percentage at 65. And second in the conference in blocks, and he takes a seat. Well, it's easy to see. He's just active. That's just the best way to describe him, energy. And he brings that uh, to this Alabama State team. Pichardo, number 15, has come back in. That's a contested shot. It was partially blocked by Iwoshu, but it ends up two points for the Braves as Trey Wayne Crosby knocks it down. He had 10 and uh, excuse me, yeah, 10 and 7 versus Alabama State when they met earlier this year. Pichardo waved off one of his teammates. Now hands it to G. This is what you want to see. G and Mosby one-on-one. -on -one. Nice step back there by Reginald G. Well, I've been impressed with G's mid-range game. He's got great upper body strength, and that's just a great individual move uh, with the pull-up. Three on three here. A little bit out of control that time by Jacoby Ross, and the Braves will come back with it. Mosby, good pass. Great control in the air by Crosby. He comes in with an immediate impact off the bench. And I talked about it at the top. Transition D for both teams. And at that time, Ross a little out of control. And a good job by Alcorn racing up the court with the numbers, getting an easy deuce. G off the screen. Free ball off the left side of the rim. Rebound fought for. And coming away with it is Sterling. That's a big-time rebound that time by Sterling. Maurice Howard out of the panhandle of Florida. Quincy. Crosby, why not? He's feeling it. Back iron, no good. Rebound. Going to go to Ross. And try to get a little cute with the pass. And it's going to end up being... Alcorn turnover. That's a difficult pass. And stripped away by Pichardo, it will remain with the Braves. Well, we are both coaches talking about transition D today. And this is a better job right here in transition offense uh, that time for Alcorn. Uh, but on that last play, uh, that's better by Alabama State getting back to break up another transition bucket uh, by Alcorn. Plenty of time to shoot 18 here. You see Alabama State doing a better job edging on ball screens. A little spinner that spun out and rebound to Ed Jones. G. And Gene Davis, number three, has checked in. A junior from Birmingham, number three. That's going to be a travel. Extra step there. Jones picked up the pivot foot. 11.50 remaining in this game. Both these teams seeking a seventh win in conference play. That'll be a fun Wednesday. We're having a great time here in the SWAC. And, of course, 
When you think about this conference, you think about fans, you have to. And Wednesday at 7 and 9 on ESPN and, of course, the ESPN app. Louisville is maybe the most interesting story out of all of those because of all the gloom and doom out of the program. And by the way, with all these reports that more stuff is coming, you don't know who's in and out of the woods right now. But still, the last eight games for them in conference have been most impressive. Yeah, it's interesting, obviously, uh, being able to overcome that. A lot of, obviously, off-court distractions uh, coming into the season. So certainly an excellent job uh, by the whole staff to keep those guys focused. Well, Alabama State shooting well so far, 7 out of 13 for head coach Lewis Jackson. We're looking at right there, Alcorn 4 of 13, and nobody's made a 3 yet. But Alabama State, not surprisingly, knocked him with a two times rebounding advantage, 10 to 5 in the early going. And right now they pick up their uh, pressure to full court in that man-to-man. -man. And that's going to lead to a steal by Terrence LaFleur. LaFleur is taking all the way, and he'll score. Terrence LaFleur. Well, we've seen now a couple times on both ends, guys make some uh, layups, degree of difficulty off the chart. That's not an easy bucket, but a great body control again by LaFleur. Howard, and he'll retreat, give it to Brewer, back to Howard, off the big Brewer screen. Wide open look here for Crosby. Three-pointers just not happening right now. We're going to get a rebounding foul against Tyler Carter, number three, who just checked in, a sophomore out of Houston. And right here after Alabama State again, they're changing up their defenses. They picked up full this time. A good wing denial. And then right here, this is not an easy finish. A great body control and concentration again at the end to use the backboard. So most everything going right right now for the home Hornets in their building. It's been an active building. And uh, Alabama State High School Regional Tournament play here today. So neither team was able to shoot around. But Char oh, yes! Yes, yes! Uh, Sports Center, uh, top 10. Uh, that could be one right there. It ought to be because he created that with a great crossover dribble. I'm hashtagging that as an SC top 10 because that was a man's dunk in traffic, not some open floor thing. Tapped up and Brewer will get two points. Oh my goodness. And I talked about it, his ability to put the ball on the floor. He's got great size and length, and his handle is on point. But that last play right there to finish with the left, my goodness. That great dive onto the floor, hitting the ground there is Crosby. Teams have done a pretty good job taking care of the ball. That is just three turnovers for each now. Howard will run the offense, and he'll be patient about it. Carter. Howard now from three. We finally have a made three ball in this one, and it's going to make this a narrow game now. At 19 to 13, and an offensive foul has been called. Just a little bit out of control by Crosby. Well, we're going to take a look at, I think, a top 10 sports center. Come on, Bristol. Don't forget about us here in Montgomery. With the cross. Number two. And the finish with the left. Thank you. Appreciate that to the ladies and gentlemen in the truck. Bichardo. Now what? <laughs> well, early on, he has been the matchup problem uh, for Alcorn. Rodney Simeon. Here's Pichardo. Going to drive again. Pull up. Knocked it down. And again, our apologies for the temporary interruption in our signal. 23-13, eight and a half minutes to go here at the Akadome in Montgomery. That's a little out of control, and it's going to draw a foul. Lucky break that Iwosho was just out of control and was hacked in the act 23 13 and he'll go to the line well what's going on right now dave alabama state's got great spacing 
on their offensive set. So they got Alcorn spread all over the floor. And now it's opening up for these guys to get some dribble lanes. And uh, they're doing a nice job of attacking the rim. They're not settling for jumpers. Uh, they're all going towards the basket. And uh, that's how you get yourself to the free throw line or some easy deuces. That's a look, good look at Dante Sterling. He replaces Maurice Howard. While we talk about just for Alcorn State, three-point shooting, they're one out of four. And Alabama State has only tried two, and that's both by G, and he's missed them both. So they have de-emphasized the three-pointer, at least in this early going. Now let's see if on this possession right here, Alcorn gets a backdoor cut. Maybe you flash a guy, use a ball fake, but uh, right now Alabama State is really aggressive in the passing lanes, and they continue to pick up full with their pressure. Alabama State finally had a foul called on them in the backcourt. And Iwosho was hit with that. Well, that's a great crossover. A little Tony Parker shot. But Mosby just can't get a break right now. Nothing is falling for A.J. Mosby. And that's a problem for the Braves. And those are all good shots. Shots that he normally makes. That's a great crossover move in the lane. And uh, his floater... Is one of the best in the swag. It's just not falling tonight for him, but he's getting some good looks. If he can get ignited, this game will change. Brewer, not a three point threat. Sterling working off there back to Brewer. Good pass there by the big man, but great defense by the Hornets. Swarming, and that's another turnover, literally, of the basketball, and that's turnover number six. All right, attention to all my colleagues in Bristol, Connecticut. We got something for you for a little show we like to call Sports Center from Mr. Fausto Pichardo. I'm never going to be able to sleep with this cold. I'll take a sick day tomorrow. On our daughter's birthday? Moms don't take sick days, moms take NyQuil Severe. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching fever, best sleep with a cold medicine. Gatorade G2. Our next Super Tuesday doubleheader starts at 7 Eastern in the Big Ten. Number two, Michigan State and Illinois at the Breslin Center. Then Coach Cal and Kentucky are in Fayetteville to take on Pig Suey. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. Crazy comeback for Michigan State on Saturday. The biggest in the history of the conference. Yeah, I mean, Northwestern had that game won. Uh, you feel for them, but obviously credit to uh, Coach Izzo and his players. Uh, that's a huge deficit to come back from, but... I've got to ask you about this, all these news reports that are coming out, that soon there will be some incredibly bad news for a lot of college basketball programs. And we don't know names yet. We will, it sounds like, very soon. But I wonder how much that is, is in the minds of some of these big schools that might be in the crossroads. Well, I can only speak from a player standpoint. Uh, you know, look, you're dealing with 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids. Uh, they have plenty on their mind, so I think, you know, they're really not as focused on that. Now, obviously, it was a little different in my playing day. There wasn't the social media presence and right. so forth. Uh, but, you know, I think from a player standpoint, I, I don't think that's, uh, you know, I don't think it's that much of a distraction because you're on the court, you're practicing, so uh, you're really focused on that uh, when you're out there. So I think, from again, from a player standpoint, it's not really that much of an impact. It was a nice lead pass by the floor, a little contact there, and that would have been an and one if the shot had gone in. The foul will be on Mosby. Yeah, dangerous play right here. Again, just active in the passing lanes, and a nice pass right there, bounce pass. Uh, uh, so often you see guys trying to lob that. That's a heads-up play and a beautiful bounce. Nine so far. Gene Davis should be the shooter. And he's getting a little perspiration off there. A little collision under the basket. And Davis will step back to the line where he is an 83% foul shooter. He's 10th in the conference in assists as well. Now, Brandon Johnson's out on the court cleaning, and the guy's job is supposed to be doing that. I'm like, man, he's doing everything out there, but. 
You know, early on in this first half, you can see Alabama State had set the tempo and tone with their defense. And they've been active, aggressive, and I think that's led to them getting uh, some opportunities on the offensive side as well. So it's the largest lead for the home Hornets, a dozen. Alcorn just cold from the field. They can't get their star player, A.J. Mosby, into the scoring column yet. He's 0 for 5, and they've turned it over a bunch, and that's another turnover. Davis got hit. He'll go to the line again. He's going to have to get helped up after that hard foul. Well, this is just an unforced, really, error right here. Just trying to go through his legs. Loses the ball, and another transition opportunity uh, for Alabama State. Yeah, and there's Johnson again mopping the floor. I like it. No egos in the swag, man. <laughs> Everybody does a little bit of something. Yeah. I'm loving it. And he's getting a big chuckle out of that, but I'm back to the offensive woes right now for Alcorn. Again, if you got a guard that's struggling, bring the ball up the court. You need to bring him big up, try to relieve some pressure with a back screen, uh, but and can ill afford to keep turning the ball over like that and give Alabama State these transition opportunities. And three points at the foul line here for Davis is three for three from the line as A.J. Mosby will come back in. He just has not had his stroke yet. And as Malcolm pointed out earlier, the shots have been intelligent shots. They're just not falling. Davis is at four free throws in a row. And more pressure here from the Hornets. Sterling is able to break it. That's a nice little pass. And that is a block. Simeon will be hit with his foul. Accepted calmly there by Lewis Jackson. But he's got things going his way right now, up by 14 with 6.50 to go. We're going to see A.J. Mosby try to get into the scoring column. Where he is a 90% foul shooter. He had 19 in the earlier meeting between these teams. One at Alcorn. 81 to 64. Wednesday, we'll have an ACC Sonic Blockbuster doubleheader. Number 10, North Carolina and Syracuse in the Carrier Dome at 7 Eastern. Then we'll move out to Cameron Indoor for Louisville taking on number five, Duke. Both games, of course, on ESPN and on the ESPN app. It's hard to believe for me, Luke May of North Carolina, that that guy started off as a walk-on. <laughs> Even the walk-ons at that place, huh? And my goodness, and I called a couple of North Carolina games early, and like this guy was a walk-on at the time, averaging a double-double, but a phenomenal story. And and certainly, North Carolina is going to be in the mix, uh, maybe potentially for another national title. And Davis lost control of it. We're going to get a timeout. Alcorn State will get the possession as going to the floor was Maurice Howard, the sophomore from Florida. With six and a half to go. We'll step aside with the Hornets up by an even dozen. There are over 480,000 college athletes. Only 2% would go pro. <laughs> That means over 470,000 will not get a shoe contract. No autographs. This time, Brandon Johnson is not mopping the floor. They have someone else taking care of it, as you can see in the distance, after that extra hustle here by Howard. And again, the spacing by Alabama State has been on point with the exception of that play right there and then both teams trying to get after it coming up with an extra additional possession. But they this is the guy right here they have to get going AJ Mosby he is going to be the key factor uh, for Alcorn they need his offensive production. All he has is a couple of free throws he's 0 for 5 from the field including one from the three point line. Sterling. Skip pass, lefty shot, Mosby short again, and the rebound going to go the other way with the, uh, the Hornets and the floor. Davis will pull up. Not seen the three ball attempted very often so far tonight by Alabama State. They haven't needed it. Mosby, that's tough drive. There's his first basket of the night. Well, I love the pace that he plays at. He can go at all levels and score. Uh, that right there, though, I think where he's his most dangerous in the open court and then his ability to finish with those floaters uh, in the lane. That's way off. 
tremendous effort, and it's going to stay with Alabama State. Wow. Now, the officials are going to discuss this to make sure that they have it. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, that's a well, and they're playing on four seconds. They try the alley oop. It's no good. Going to be intercepted and controlled the other way. They tried to force one in there to G. They try an alley oop on the other end. Do a lot of traffic, and it's going to turn into a little bit of gold there for Yale and Reed. And we have an official time out. And I'm not sure if he's calling a delay of game. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. For number two. AJ Mosby hit with the delay of game. If he does it again, it's a technical foul. And but I like the change up in defense by Coach Robinson. Now they're back into that matchup zone. And I think that's probably going to be their best defense because early on in this game, Alabama State was in the lane all day when they went to man. Yeah, it was Johnson and Pichardo now the floor from three. And three-point shooting not really that good for Alabama State at the moment. That's a quick fire with confidence. Shot by Maurice Howard, a 39% three-point shooter. He's one of the best in the swag. Transition D. Again, get a stop. Alcorn, nice job. Rebounding. And then get out in transition. Uh, make him pay. Hand down. 7-0 run. Pichardo. Play well between, and he got both Pichardo and Johnson out there right now. That's a lot of activity, and they have been brutal against the Braves so far. They just can't stop them. No, they are all over the offensive glass. We're going to get a little contact here. Going against Jacoby Ross. His first. Alabama State already in the bonus, and they only have four fouls against them, so Alcorn's got... Got to get a few more whistles their way to get to the line. Well, both coaches are doing a nice job in game adjustments. Alcorn going to that zone. Uh, but I think the biggest thing they need to figure out, Dave, the turnovers really have hurt them uh, in this first half. Really unforced right there, a travel and a missed opportunity and possession. Well, they're double digits in turnovers already. They're, they're, they had a 7 0 run that was stopped by Pichardo's basket. But yeah, they've, they've wounded themselves repeatedly with turnovers. Ross found just a tiny gap in the defense and lays it in. And we have an Alcorn player shaken up. And that is Devin Brewer. And we'll take a better look at what happened to Brewer in a little bit. We will step aside. 345 to go while the injured player is attended to. The entire season has led to this moment. The anticipation has been building all year. It's time for the Toyota SWAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Be a part of the action March 9th and 10th as the SWAC Basketball Tournament moves to a new arena. Join us at Del Mar Fieldhouse in Houston, Texas as two teams punch their ticket to the big dance. We will see who rises to the top. A champion will be crowned. The 2018 Toyota Southwestern Athletic Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Get your tickets now at SWAC.org. New Mountain Dew House, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. At Sam Adams, we salute those people who did that thing. Built that thing, tried that thing, messed that thing up, then tried it again. For all the people who believe in going for it, failing. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sam Adams. Fill your glass. We're in Montgomery at Alabama State, where the home team is in front of us. 131-22, 3.45 remaining in our opening half on Big Monday. And we take a look there at Devin Brewer, who was shaken up on that play. And we had a chance to look at it during the break, and here's what happened. Yeah, tough, really tough play. Uh, very fortunate it wasn't worse than it uh, wind up eventually being. But uh, uh, certainly you never want to see that, and obviously with the uh, now emphasis on head injuries. You never want to see a guy falling like that. And 
uh, potentially banging the back of his head on the floor. So we will keep an eye on him. It's just an, an, an accident. He just fell over his own teammate. So the Braves will carry on while Brewer rests and gets it together. Glad to see that he's on the bench and didn't need to go to the locker room here. Crosby has been effective off the bench. Pass is low and just picked. Stolen away. LaFleur again. He has been a thief out there. He, I think he's got two or three steals. And now it's stolen right back by Mosby. Draws a lot of contact. He'll go to the line. Mosby really showed his savvy right there. Well, when I talked to Coach Robinson uh, before, I said, what does this guy do well? This right here. In transition, the little floater, and he's making it look easy right there. Two guys on him take the hit and then show the touch of the kiss it off the glass and one. The foul on G is his first. We get a good look at Mosby, and it's no surprise that Alcorn is crawling back into this game, and Mosby is starting to score. Yeah, he is fun to watch. Uh, so explosive. I love the pace that he plays at. Uh, just really under control. Uh, a guy that their offense is going to go as far as he takes them. Contested three. Beautiful shot by G. And it's a nine-point game again. Well, not bad defense, but just better offense. And you'll live with that if you're Alcorn. Again, uh, them shooting contested threes like that as opposed to getting the easy looks they were getting early on in the first half. Well, that was the first three that the Hornets have made tonight. They've missed their first six. And another steal by LaFleur. This guy's unbelievable. And he had it poked out of his hands, and he lost control of it. So you get one, you give one back. But LaFleur, that is three steals for him. Well, this is one he's got to give up, though. G sitting right here. Again, nice steal. But you got to give this one up. you got your teammate running right around the side. And uh, that's a missed opportunity right there. And he took a quick peek, too, and saw him there and still hung on to it. By that time, the defensive play was made. See turnover, 21 total in the game, 8 for or against Alabama State, and 13 against Alcorn. Here's a tough three missed and a rebound. LaFleur. Pichardo, and it should be a foul. Yeah, and it is. Pichardo is, it drove the player out of bounds. Nice post D right here and recovery. In hockey, that's allowed. In <laughs> basketball, it is not. And that's one on Pichardo. Well, let's see if you know, Alcorn can get a good offensive possession. Uh, the key thing is turnovers. I mean, really, it's as simple as that. They need to take better care of the ball uh, in the half court and full court. Pull up jumper there, short. Great look. And counted a difficult basket for Crosby in traffic. Whistle there, away from the ball. And it's going to be on number 20, Yalen Reed. Well, the degree of difficulty in this game, both teams making some shots, taking contact, a lot of on that one right there, and then the concentration at the end and the ability to use glass has been impressive in this game. And happy to tell you that Devin Brewer is back in after that nasty fall he took, so that's great news. Back of the line, Johnson. Out of Garfield Heights, Ohio. And Alcorn quickly into the front court. Way off that time by Mosby. The whole possession looks rushed. Yeah, Mosby continues to get some good looks. He's just off the mark tonight from beyond the arc. LaFleur gets by Mosby. Look at that change in direction. And LaFleur. Wow. Tell you what, the bench. I think if you're Lewis Jackson, you are thrilled with your bench in the first half. And the energy and effort on defense. Uh, that has really uh, been the story for them in this first half. 
And that foul will go against the Braves here. Well, Alcorn has had all kinds of problems stopping ball penetration. Uh, that's just a tough move right there. I can't really call that bad D because uh, that's good help side defense. It's going to happen. Uh, just better offense to be able to avoid contact and then use the glass again. So here is Terrence LaFleur, the senior from Wetumpka, Alabama. 56% free throw shooter, misses the front end of the one and one. Next time, it'll be double bonus. Mosby was able to get away from the floor, but Pichardo picked him up right away. They, he is priority one, two, and three right now defensively for the Hornets. Oh, Pichardo sends it back. Shot clock is off. Wow. He blocked it and kept it in play. And that's the key thing right there. The great help side defense, but even better awareness uh, to keep that ball alive. And I believe that was Johnson. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was Johnson right there. A beautiful help side D. And then uh, the court awareness to keep it in play. A lot of guys would have punched that out of bounds. And it, like, it looks good for TV. It looks good for the crowd. But you don't have possession. Heads up play that time by Johnson, keeping possession for his team. Well, Brandon Johnson, we mentioned earlier, number two in the swag in blocks. And when he and Pichardo are out there together, they are incredibly energetic, and they've been very, very effective tonight for Alabama State. Pichardo has picked up two offensive rebounds, three on the night. He's also four out of five shooting. He has eight points. And Johnson has seven points and also picked up a couple of rebounds and now that they both have a block shot yeah, Johnson uh, one of the better rebounders in the slack in the last four games he's been in double digits uh, in rebounding five seconds Pichardo will screen Ross gonna have to fire long three yes big finish for Alabama State with the block by Johnson to Jacoby Ross the freshman draining a three well, it was all Alabama State in this first half. The freshman, Jacoby Ross, with the cross and a pull-up deep. Alabama State are rolling in the first half. And the home of the Mighty March and Hornets, Alabama State and Alcorn State going at it on ESPN's Big Monday, presented by Joseph A. Bank. And right now it's the Hornets on top. 39-29, and they have forced a lot of turnovers in this first half already, Malcolm Huckabee, and we've seen a very energetic, not always the, the neatest game ever played, and it'll drive the coaches crazy when they watch the tape, but the energy in this building is incredible. Yeah, give credit to Alabama State. Their defense really created a lot of offense for them in that first half. Points off of turnovers was huge for Alabama State, and I think also it allowed them to get some easy transition buckets. It's easy to get energy when you're getting those easy buckets early on in the game. And it also helped Alabama State that A.J. Mosby for Alcorn got off to a bit of a slow start. Yeah, he really did. And coming into this game, his last four games, he was averaging 20 or more points. And uh, credit Alabama State, they were getting in his face, making it difficult for him to score. But he's just too good of a player to keep under wraps. I expect them to have a better second half. And Reginald G, three out of six from the field, seven Red. points in that game, first half. Yeah, and they had excellent spacing Alabama State in that first half, which allowed them to get some nice dribble drives. And uh, that right there, again, beautiful body control to take it a hit to finish. And then there's this, our Sports Center top ten nominee. Uh, that right there was just disrespectful. With the left <laughs> hand off the cross, and we saw great help side defense uh, by both bigs before Alabama State. Excellent job that time, though, keeping the ball inbounds. And then right here, this is just a freshman. You can see why they're so high on this young man. A little pull-up jumper off the crossover, and uh, that's how Alabama State ended the first half. A strong finish for the Hornets. They have 16 points off turnovers in this first half. Both these teams trying to win a seventh game in the SWAC. This is Big Monday presented by Joseph A. Bank. We're in the SWAC. Where they got a full schedule. They got four games going tonight. And we'll get you caught up on uh, the other scores a little bit later on. Alabama State up by 10. We start the second half with the visitors, the Braves, and Alcorn State with the ball. 
And not surprisingly, it's in the hands of A.J. Mosby. In traffic, and a friendly roll that time for Yalen Reed, the sophomore from Nashville. That's how you want to execute coming out of that first half on the road, take care of the ball, and then get a quality possession on that first one. Ross, that's a difficult shot. Man, that was not easy, but he, I got the impression, Malcolm, that he was going to shoot that no matter what. And you can see again why they are so high on this freshman. He is a difficult matchup, quick, and a beautiful pull-up game. That's Maurice Howard getting the start in this half. Brewer's not going to shoot from there. That's going to be a foul against Brewer, however. Moving screen. Charge to the break, number 15. And that will be his first. Both these teams with six wins in the swag. We already know the eight teams that are going to be in it because two teams are ineligible out of the ten this year, including the conference leader in Grambling State as Pichardo scores there. So top four get to host on-campus sites in the first round. This is a huge game. And Right now, Alcorn, I think the zone is going to be their best defense as they continue to execute offensively uh, coming out in the second half. But, Dave, the problem right now, uh, defensively and man, they really are having all kinds of problems stopping Alabama State. It's 10 point lead for Alabama State. Green with a couple of buckets quickly in this half. Pichardo. That's a good look for Pichardo. It's a smart pass. Shot didn't go by Iwushu. Iwushu, oh, pardon me, but still a nice pass. Yeah, great spacing, unselfish play. And can ask for a better look from the three-point line. We're going to get an offensive foul here drawn by Pichardo. Well, Pichardo just continues to impress. We talked about his offense, obviously a top 10 nominee for Duncan, and that's just beautiful outside defense. And that's going to happen in games where dribble penetration happens, but your rotation uh, has to be on point and on time. And uh, the bigs of Alabama State have done an excellent job coming over to shut off dribble drives. Here's Ross, who certainly does not lack confidence. And he won't show. Did not get it. We're going to get a whistle and a rebounding foul. And that's going to, looks like we're going to stay. That's going to be on Freeman Crosby, the freshman from Laurel, Mississippi. And we're going to get a good look at, again at Brandon Johnson at the line. Or he is one for two tonight. He'll get two. Our next Super Tuesday doubleheader, 7 o'clock Eastern in the Big Ten. Second-ranked Michigan State hosting Illinois at the Breslin Center. Then off we go to Fayetteville. It'll be Kentucky and Arkansas. And you'll see these games on ESPN and the ESPN app. A couple of missed free throws for Johnson. Not his thing. That is Dante Sterling wide open from three. You can't do that. He is an excellent three-point shooter at 37%. Ross, good pass. Pichardo lost control. Uh, Lewis Jackson. Wearing T-shirts on the uh, honoring Kay Yao, the late Kay Yao, in the women's game that was before uh, the women played in pink uniforms, and they've got those T-shirts all around the building tonight. All of the coaches wearing them for the Hornets, and they've also been have the cheerleaders throwing them in the crowd from time to time as well. And that never any fight against presidents. Yeah, great cause and a great show of support here at Alabama State. That was deflected. It actually hit the official who is part of the court and it will stay with Alcorn State. We 
We've got a little bit of a high school reunion here tonight. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to bring that up. We'll explain that in just a moment. But this building contains at least two confirmed Fort Lauderdale High School alums. You know, there may be somebody else here who is a flying L as well. Meantime, Alcorn has cut this lead from 10 to 5. Mosby with another nice split of the defenders. Now Johnson had everything going for him and just simply threw the shot poorly. Mosby at 100 miles an hour, a little bit out of control that time, and off comes Alabama State. And right now it's four on four. I think we have one player may have lost a contact lens or has got a problem with his eyes. He, he, he's missing something's on the floor. Oh yeah, contact lens I think is out. Yep. That's G, who's basically playing vision impaired at the moment. He wants the ball. Now we're going to get a whistle, and a block is the call against Alcorn, and G's going to head down to the other end and try to find his lens. And somebody is also going to help him out who's on the uh, cleanup crew here. Well, I wonder if he's got a backup, but that's good eye work. My eyes, I couldn't oh, see that right he's now. He's got to clean that off, though, doesn't he? Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm sure he's got something in his locker for just this sort of thing. Nope, he's just going to plop that baby in there. And I just heard a student section behind me go no no nope, you gotta nope. clean that off you so. can see it's still on his finger i thought he went toward his eye it's, this is how it happened uh, this is kind of the way this game has been at times it's been a little and uh, there we go leave it up to the trainer to take care of business it's been a little wacky at times a little out of control but very entertaining to say the least yeah the energy has been great really from the start of this game and uh, you're absolutely right. The consistency has not been there, but uh, at times we've seen some quality uh, plays on both ends. And a free throw good there by Toby Iwusho. Who was Iwushu until recently, and he informed the folks here, no, it's Iwusho. Brewer backing him down. Uh, looks like somebody got a piece of that shot. I think that was Ed Jones who got a hand on it. Pichardo, we know he has breakaway ability, but not that time. And that'll lead us to a timeout with 15.47 remaining. Alabama State up by eight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. And Old Spice, je ne parle même pas français. Ooh la la. Here is our scoring time coming out of the first break, and we see that Montez Robinson has had a great run at Alcorn in the last couple of seasons. He is the current SWAC Coach of the Year. There he is right there. And really enjoyed speaking with him uh, prior to the game. And I always like asking coaches, who's had the biggest influence mm -hmm. on you as a person and a coach? And uh, he lit right up. He talked about his mother, Ruby Robinson. So I wanted to give her a shout out. And you know, he's certainly doing a fantastic job with this program. And you know, last season was supposed to be a rebuild year for them. And they made it all the way to the SWAC finals. And you know, certainly a big reason why what he was able to do with the in-game adjustments. That shot does not count. He also had a significant injury loss. Reggie Johnson got hurt before conference play and broke his leg. And, you know, there's a player they were really counting on to help them in conference play. He was a guy that was in, going to be in the discussion for player of the year in the SWAC. And uh, certainly you lose that type of production five games into the season as they did. It's uh, certainly a tough one to break. I think uh, he's done a nice job, though, managing it and uh, keeping these guys competitive. Devin Brewer with a nice shot. It's 46-40. Alabama State led at the break by 10. Nice job, though, by Alcorn staying in this game. That's going to be a trip right in front of the official there. I know Maurice Howard's going to dispute the call. He's not going to win. First number five, number five, Maurice 
Oh, and he's still talking about it, though. <laughs> he's going to get his money's worth. And it's a longer conversation than normal. It also allows the cleanup crew to uh, take care of the perspiration. We take a look at the call. Right here, Ross trying to split. A little bit of contact. Nothing major, but there was an official right in front of the play. So Alabama stable inbound. And here's Ross. So this is a slower pace that we've seen. Just this little half-court set that's going on here. And I like the adjustment again by Alcorn going to a matchup zone. I think, again, that's going to be their best D to try to stop dribble drives. Corner three. And put back on the offensive rebound by Reginald G. Now that's the only problem, though, when you go to the zone. You miss your blockout assignments. A good job that time by G getting on the offensive glass. Oh, good footwork by Brewer, but his shot was blocked. Ed Jones in there. And, uh, Dave, this will happen out of the zone again. You're not playing man, so the assignments are a little off, and that's just great position, though, by G, and he's so strong with his upper body. They only have seven to shoot here, by the way. Mosby, three to shoot. He likes that little floater, and he drains that one. Mid-range game, lethal, crossovers. I mean, he is just uh, so difficult to keep out of the lane, and then his floaters... Uh, defense opened up quite a bit as Ross, you know, will get fouled. And you knew he was going to shoot it. The whole building knew he was going to shoot it because he was running out of time on the shot clock, but he still created his own shot. And that's tough. And this is why he's one of the better players in the SWAT. Look at this right here. Little cross, hesitation, get him back going the other way, and then the floater. See, a lot of guys don't have that in their game, that mid-range jumper to be able to pull up after you get by somebody and beat the help side defender and uh, that's what makes AJ Mosby, AJ Mosby so difficult to guard his mid-range game is really impressive but Alabama State keeps pushing them away back close to the 10 where we were at the half all corn states not gotten any closer than six it's easy to see why Mosby uh, coming into this game has had four straight games where he scored 20 or more Leads the team in steals, assists, free throw percentage, and scoring. He does a little bit of everything. And Alcorn again, right back uh, within six. Okay, let's see if they can block out uh, out of this matchup zone. Ross, that's a big guy. He got around with Brewer, and it wasn't quite a dunk. Jones wound up to rip it, but was forced to lay it in instead. And Ed Jones had a nice two or three minutes here. I thought we were going to have another Sports Center <laughs> top 10 nominee if he was able to get that dunk. Bichardo with a rebound off the miss by Howard. Neither team was really lit it up from three in this game. Yeah, it's Paul Pichardo's name. G. No good. And Brewer will pick up the rebound off the floor. And now he'll try to bring it up himself. Gets by Pichardo. And look at the big guy go. Splitting the defenders. Great feed and flushed home by Reed. A beautiful basketball. Unselfish basketball. And that's all set up by A.J. Mosby. I mean, beautiful split, draw another defender, and then the bounce pass was on point for the dunk. Under 12 minutes in this one. Alabama stayed up by six, and there's the third palming violation called tonight. Well, A.J. Mosby picking it up in the second half with the beautiful dime for the dunk. No, no. Pick up. For Alabama State, that gentleman there, I've known for a long time. <laughs>
<laughs> we are high school mates from Fort Lauderdale High School in Florida. Tony Green has been one of the top officials in college basketball for decades. Uh, Tony was also a pretty neat point guard at FLHS. I was the announcer. I'll tell you what, you guys had a nice little family reunion yeah, going on and high school reunion, but uh, certainly one of the best in the business and an even better person. Yes, you know, he really is. Uh, Tony is just a solid guy. Proud to call him a friend. And uh, I get, I'll get get about one, maybe two Tony games a year. And to show you how that Tony and I have gotten just a hair older, he's officiated games that my son has played in. <laughs> and actually once threw his college coach out of a game. Called me about that one later. I had to miss that game working. And he said, I had to throw your son's coach out. I had no choice. <laughs> Back to this one right here. A.J. Mosby uh, continues to impress. And this guy as well, too. Boy, Pichardo is having a tremendous day. He is the only Alabama State player in double figures at the moment, although a couple of others are on the verge. He's got a dozen tonight. Corner three, that's a tough one, a lot of arc on it. Actually, from the side, he clipped the backboard. That's hard to do, G. Jones off the G assist. Yeah, that's a good no call by the referee that time. Uh, not to call that charge. And, and I'm gonna give your guy, that? I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give your high school <laughs> who classmate call some love on that one. <laughs> uh, and I think that's a good no call, not to call a charge on that play that time. Wide open from three, back iron. And again, the three-point shooting for Alcorn. And we're gonna get a whistle there and a foul against the Braves. Three-point shooting is just poor tonight. They've only made three out of 13. And they've been good looks. Uh, yeah. Th they haven't been a forced threes or, you know, threes where the shot clock's winding down and they gotta heave, heave one up. Uh, they've had some quality looks. They just have been, been unable to convert those. Well, I'll tell you one thing, they are, they have the best floor crew I've seen in the SWAC this season. This group here at Alabama State is outstanding. That young man there is doing yeoman's work. And what a gig that's got to be, this young man being out here uh, with these college players. I bet you five bucks that when this game's over, he'll be out here shooting uh, if, if they're letting. Absolutely. I remember that as a kid uh, going to those UConn games. I'd go to all those old Big East games and be in awe of the players out there on the court. We got everybody having a hand in here. Tell you what, Lewis Jackson trains his team to do a little bit of everything. We've seen Brandon <laughs> Johnson with the mop. Now we've seen Jacoby Ross. Now, if you're really hardcore, I used to play ball with a guy who would take the towel and then wipe his face with it <laughs> after he wiped the floor. Dead serious. Uh. Uh, that's a little bit too much for me, but yes, I don't think. mind wiping the floor. <laughs> I just certainly not using it afterwards on any part of my body. I wish I was lying about that, but I am not. <laughs> Rattle them both in. We'll get a substitution here for the Braves. Crosby will come back Braves in. A Brewer will check out. Number 23, Troy. Now, Dave, I think this is an important possession for Alcorn. Uh, in particular, you got Mosby out of the game, and it's a double-digit lead right now for Alabama State. Uh, let's see if they have the answer for it uh, to try to stop this roll by uh, Alabama State. And who's going to be A.J. Mosby's running buddy here? Who's going to help out? We're going to get a whistle here, and it's going to go against Alabama State. And Ross will be hit with a foul. That'll be his second. But at the moment, Mosby not out there for Alcorn. So they're going to turn to Maurice Howard and Dante Sterling a lot. Howard will run the offense in Mosby's absence. Almost thrown away. Great play by Sterling to catch that. Brewer left open. He'll pitch it. 4-3. It is just not happening right now at all for Alcorn State from three. That was a wide open look. The Trigana contested look. That's no good. Chipped off the rim. Ross leads the break. Gee, the 
Wow. Gee, that was a great dunk. Wow. You could see that coming. The transition offense. Uh, that's how you want to run it right there. You get a stop and then push the ball up, and she took care of the rest. My goodness. Tend to shoot. Brewer. Again, this time they fake the three. Off the glass. Offensive foul. Take away the basket. The charge drawn by G. So he's performing on both ends of the floor. Well, let me introduce you to the Reginald G. Front man move right there. Nice transition offense, and then G took care of the rest. Calling Bristol again. Hello, Bristol. Hello, Bristol. The folks are working the highlights tonight. Maybe you'll uh, get Sports Center, and maybe we'll get on the Van Pizzi show as well. And uh, this freshman, Jacoby Ross, continues to impress. Uh, that's good court awareness to give the ball up early so G can just catch it right in stride and then do his thing. And again, so often you see guys take an extra dribble or hold on to the ball too long. Uh, that time he got rid of it quick and uh, give your guy running the wings a chance to go up and finish. Mentioned that Ross does not lack for confidence. That shot just rimmed down. They're going to be a foul there on G, and probably one he didn't have to commit. His Brewer had control of the ball. Yeah, a little over aggressive, but you know that's been their calling card tonight. They've been pounding the offensive glass, uh, really aggressive defensively as well. And that one, though, you're right. He had secured the rebound. Let that one go. You don't want to put them in a bonus situation. Screen. Mosby again, that incredible ability he has to slice through defenders. Ball out of bounds and will stay with the Braves. But Alabama State has increased their halftime lead. They had led by 10. Now they have it up to a dozen as they try to even the season series and more importantly get a seventh win as they fight for position in the swag. Southern's already picked up a victory tonight. They were all in that top four. Pine Bluff and Texas Southern in a very important game. It was down to the last minute with Pine Bluff up by two. And would have counted had it gone in. Dante Sterling will go to the line. The jump shooter fouled by Iwusho. That's his third. Sterling, 78% from the line coming into the night. He didn't waste any time. I like that. Don't get up there and think about it. I like those guys that take 50 practice swings in the <laughs> golf round and then go hit one into the woods. Just step up, let it fly. And uh, those both look pretty good. Excellent rotation and release. Rip it, rip it is Malcolm Huckabee's advice for you budding free throw shooters. It's a 10 point lead. Pichardo needs help. He goes to Ross. And Brewer got a piece of that. Hit ahead pass for Mosby. Just a little bit too much. Look out. Almost ran into one of our camera operators there. We are exactly at eight minutes, and the ball will stay with Alcorn. And we'll have a timeout. 60 to 50. It's still a 10 point lead as we were at halftime for the Hornets. Gatorade. Sports Center after Kansas, Oklahoma on ESPN with John Butchigross and Kenny Main. Bracketologist Joe Lenardi joins the show to talk about Trey Young and the Sooners' bubble chances. It's not going real well for him right now, but we'll find out. Plus, we'll hear from Giancarlo Stanton after his first batting practice at Pinstripes and our confidential players only, Paul, what they're saying about LeBron's 
free agent future. I saw this earlier today. It's very interesting. Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN app. And if they've been paying attention, Malcolm, this will be on Sports Center. Uh, we've seen some nice, aggressive moves to the ball, and that one right there, Principal G, in transition. And then this one right here. I like it with the left hand. Uh, that right there is angry mm -hmm. uh, at the rim. And uh, both guys uh, finishing with authority. Well, it won't take us long to get back to the hotel. I'm flipping on, and right about that time, we should see if our efforts were successful. In traffic, and Ross saved it. In fact, he ran into... And we apologize for the temporary loss of our signal. You saw or just missed A.J. Mosby going one out of two from the line. And the uh, the star for Alcorn State's had a tough night. 14 points. Missed all three of his three attempts and five of 14 shooting four turnovers, five assists. That's nice, a good shot fake by G. Oh, goodness. Acrobatics by G. Well, his upper body strength and body control uh, just continues to impress. For him to be able to get into the lane and then just concentrate and then control and finish the way he does, uh, it, it's been on display all night. And that's going to be a third foul on Ed Jones, and that draws the ire of Lewis Jackson, who's going to take him out and bring Brandon Johnson in. I mean, look at the body control right here. Nice little head fake, poor closeout, and then this is just great strength right here. Take the hit and then go up and finish strong. A poor closeout. The help is late. And, uh, that has been Reginald G all night. Bichardo with the interception and Ross all along. Seventeenth turnover is a costly one, and now Alabama State is a, I believe, their largest lead at thirteen. This is danger zone right now for Alcorn. They're in desperate need of a bucket. And that is going to, we're going to stay here, says the official, it looks like. I thought that might have been on Reed, but the call's going to go against Alabama State. Once again, you saw A.J. Mosby split a double team. I really don't know how he does it. But, you know, he missed that pull-up jumper. Fatigue. Yeah. And again, if you're Alabama State, A.J. Mosby, he's one of the better players in the SWAC. He's been impressive. Uh, but he's fatigued because of all the defense that they're throwing at him. Ross, unguarded. Nobody came out on him, and they beat the defense down there, and now this is Alabama State's largest lead without question. And almost an end one opportunity. We'll march to the line again. It's not going to be Johnson with a foul. Well, remember this name, Jacoby Ross, uh, the freshman guard uh, for Alabama State. Uh, he is going to be a guy that uh, is going to continue to get better. Uh, as his career pro progresses, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him up there in contention for SWAC player of the year when it's all said and done uh, when he leaves Alabama State. He is does not play like a freshman, uh, doesn't look like a freshman, and he's got the it factor, that swagger where, like you said, he does not lack in any confidence. No, he certainly hasn't shown any shyness about letting loose tonight. Did not get in the starting lineup until January 29th against Texas Southern. Again, just a freshman, a true freshman out of New Orleans. But he's top 10 in field goal, excuse me, free throw percentage, three point percentage, and assists. And again, uh, we're having uh, the mop out there. That's why we're waiting for these free throws. Well, it's a beautiful facility here. I've been impressed mm -hmm. uh, with the Akadom and certainly uh, something that. In all schools, you look at that now, obviously, in the recruiting game, uh, what type of facilities you have. But uh, this is one of the nicest I've seen uh, thus far in the SWAC or really any other conference. It's been uh, really impressive to see. There's some pressure now being put on by the Braves defensively, and it is broken rather handily by Ross. This pass for G, and G lost it, got it back, and laid it in. Never stopped moving forward. I know they got a football program here as well, too. He is just an incredible athlete. Uh, I think he can put him on any field, and uh, he is going to excel. He is.
Yeah, it was some devastating fast break basketball. The Alabama State Hornets have taken the 17 point lead. We're really sorry you couldn't see this live, but enjoy it now. I'm going to start calling him uh, Mr. G. Uh, raise the roof, young fella, right here. Beautiful pass on point. Uh, but another uh, top play uh, by this guy right here. Reginald G has had himself a night. Look at those numbers. 17 points, 8 of 12 from the field goal from the floor. But uh, the defense uh, that he has displayed all night long has just been uh, on point and impressive. And I don't want to let go that the guy who threw him the pass, LaFleur, number 30, has five steals tonight coming off the bench. Brewer, good shot there from the big man. Devin Brewer. And LaFleur will get it here off the pass as the press is broken rather easily. And Ross, earlier tonight he might have shot that, but not now. Yeah, heads up play by the freshman then. And now, obviously, the clock in Alabama State's favor. The floor's got an opening. Oh, he went to the left hand. Oh, man, that was nice. Well, that's just fatigue on the defensive side. No heads on the ball screen. And nobody picked up the ball to cut it off. And Remember, the SWAC is on an unusual Saturday-Monday rotation. That, that could have been an and-one opportunity. So these athletes were playing hard on Saturday, and 48 hours later, they're asked to go at it again. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. And very tough on preparation also for the coaching staff. And we've talked quite a bit. In fact, all three weeks that Malcolm and I have been in the SWAC and talked quite a bit about the tournament and what's coming up again with two schools, Grambling and Alabama A&M, not eligible. This is how it stacks up at the moment. And we'll get you some scores here after the next break. We do know that Southern is a winner tonight. And it's looking very good for Alabama State. But not over yet. Well, Alcorn continues. Uh, to play hard, and that's all you want to see if you're Coach Robinson. That your guys continue to compete and try to see if they can get themselves back into this game. You got a bunch of ball handlers out there on the floor. You got Ross. G can handle the ball. And to be a forward, uh, really a wing player, but his handle is like a point guard. He is just. It's really a matchup nightmare, and it's hard to believe he's not in double digits in terms of his season average. Uh, the way we've seen him play tonight has just uh, really been impressive. Well, this is an Alabama State team that took some early season lumps, as all SWAC teams tend to do. They played in Starkville against Mississippi State. They played... ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905. And in part by Sam Adams, fill your glass. Alabama State on the attack at the Acadome. Leading Alcorn State 74-57. Lewis Jackson closer to, to another victory at his alma mater, where his number is retired. He's in the Conference's Hall of Fame. And I don't, I don't think the women's game went the way of his wife. So he gets to brag a little bit, if he dares, <laughs> when he gets home. I'm leaving. I'm not even going to talk about that one. I'm going to leave that one alone. Uh, but certainly an unbelievable story. And, you know, we talked to him about that. And, you know, he's created a family environment here. And obviously his wife being the women's coach. Uh, and, you know, really both programs, what they do with their players, off the court I, I think is uh, equally as impressive and I want to talk about that as well too they make sure their guys graduate uh, and they're prepared to go on and he talks to them about that in terms of preparing them for life uh, and both coaches do an excellent job of doing that and I believe that's what you owe these young men when you bring them into your university well you tell the parents that you're going to graduate them you got to follow through <laughs> I mean yes it's up to the young men and women as well to follow through and you know it's difficult you you went through it when you're traveling your concentration isn't always on your classes because you're not in the class 
Uh, but that's still part of the responsibility. There she is, Frida Freeman Jackson, women's coach. Had a, a tough loss. They had a chance in that uh, game against the Lady Braves. So off the timeout. Ross. And by the way, a new 10 seconds, in case you're wondering why we have another pile of bodies on the floor. And this is going to be a foul. And we will be shooting for the rest of the night. Yalen Reed hit with his fourth foul. That time the official felt like he just sort of swooped in and grabbed him. Kobe Ross is going to be at the foul line uh, for Alabama State. Apologize, we've had a few temporary blackouts this evening, and we're doing, we want to thank our crew for the extra hard work of trying to get us back on the air as fast as we can. It's one of those things that sometimes things are out of our control. 207 left, and we will be sending Brewer to the line. Where he has struggled a bit this year at 44%. Sophomore from Georgia. Driving Montgomery from the Atlanta airport takes you just a little over two hours if 85 is cooperating. Tyler Carter will check in here for the Braves as Yalen Reed checks out. He was the co-defensive player of the year in the preseason in the SWAC. Seventy-five, fifty-eight, coming up to the two-minute mark, and Alcorn will go down swinging. That doesn't phase this guy at all. Finds the open man. It's G. Missed everything. We're going to get a foul, and I think Pichardo's going to be hit with that. 75-58 will go down to the line again. And that's not a good foul by Pichardo. Again, uh, you have the lead. Clock obviously is on your time. You don't mind crashing, but you have to do that without fouling. Well, Mississippi Valley State is up six on Prairie View A&M with 36 seconds to go. Southern defeated Alabama A&M tonight, 60 to 50, and Pine Bluff beats Texas Southern, 62 to 61. So that's a big one for Pine Bluff. They are the de facto leaders in the conference, even though Grambling has a better record. Grambling is uneligible for the SWAC tournament this year. Mosby knocked down a couple of free throws. 15-point game, minute 46 to go, and the Braves are not calling off the pressure. Gee, nice pass, yeah, and that's when you press, though, you leave yourself vulnerable. And good job by Alabama State, again, recognizing that, breaking it, and then taking advantage of the three-on-two. Uh, that's just beautiful uh, press-break offense by Alabama State. They have played really well tonight, especially in the second half. The first half was a little crazy, but this half they've been much more under control. And you talked about something, their energy. Mm -hmm. They came out right off the bat, and they had energy. They were aggressive on defense, and I think that's a big reason why they've been able to get these easy opportunities on the offensive side. And when they have their half-court sets, they've executed and you know, set guys up for easy looks. Ross. Yes, sir. That's appropriate. He deserves that basket. For the way he has played tonight, 16 points, 
Six rebounds, six assists, and a steal. Now, I'm glad I'm sitting here <laughs> and not out there trying to guard that. You already have a bad ankle. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> crossover lethal. And the key with all these guys, Mosby as well, too. I know he struggled tonight, but uh, a lot of guys cross over, but they can't finish. They can't pull up. Or they don't have that mid-range game to get it up before the big gets over. But uh, this freshman, I tell you, Jacoby Ross, he's got it all. He's got the pull up. He's got the step back. And he's also got the ability to get into the lane and finish uh, with the bigs. So this is going to be win number seven in the conference for Alabama State. They'll improve to seven and seven. And one more time, Jacoby Ross. And a quick timeout called here, possibly to get some reserves into the game. We'll see. Now remember that name. I mean, Jacoby oh, Ross, yeah. he is... Uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of freshmen, uh, you know, around the country, different conferences, but uh, they got a good one right here at Alabama State and Jacoby Ross. Let's go back, though, and take a look at the night for his teammate, Reginald G. A grown man move right here. <laughs> this is the strength uh, in transition. Ross giving it up. Little head fake on this one right here of uh, the body control. And then this right here, that's just unfair. I mean, we don't know which one to pick for a sports center. He's raising the roof, and it's been that type of night uh, for Alabama State and G. G had 17 points, and uh, Alabama State did not substitute anybody, so waning seconds of this one. Alcorn State will drop to 6-9 and nine in conference play. And that will do it. I want to thank Malcolm Huckabee and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dave Lamont saying so long from Montgomery, Alabama, and the Acadome where the final score is 82-62. Alabama State evens their season series with Alcorn. Coming up next on ESPNU, 30 for 30, the Guru would go. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night from Montgomery.